10 Things You Shouldn't Say to a Car Dealership. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter. It doesn't matter if you're shopping online or if you're physically visiting a car dealership. There are cars you should not be showing in this poker game of buying and selling cars. In a perfect world, car dealerships should focus their training on producing outstanding customer service. And the truth is that some do. I get reports from all around the country that demonstrate that, and I give credit where credit is due. However, what are far too many dealerships still training their people on? Number one, how to remove objections. As opposed to having a real conversation with you, letting you speak and addressing your concerns. Number two, word tracks to control the sales process. Psychological trickery to confuse you and interrupt your thought process as opposed to real answers to your questions. Number three, how to close the deal, setting the trap, as opposed to constructing a win-win proposal with real solutions that work. Salesmen who actually do honestly address customer concerns will tell you that it's not uncommon that they are mocked by other sales staff, calling them order takers, as if sincerely listening to people is a bad or stupid thing. Too many dealers spend no real time training their people on substance that has something to do with what you are trying to buy, like cars, trucks, and SUVs, which explains why many of you quickly realize you know far more about the vehicle you're trying to buy than the person who is showing it to you. Most importantly, some dealers don't invest any training on helping customers. Instead, they train on cornering, manipulating, and selling customers. They train on products to promote and upsell, and train on how to do an effective job of turning over to the managers and to the finance officers. These are the real closers. This is what is otherwise known as the tired old predatory sales model that seeks its next victim. Before we get rolling, if this is your first time here, you might consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have a specific question you'd like a direct answer on, do me a favor. Use hashtag the homework guy in your question or comment and put it in the comment section below. Or email me at info at the I try to get back to as many people as I can and I have help from staff checking in on your comments and emails too. I also do free car contract reviews. Just black out any personal information and send me a copy. I'll be happy to tell you what can be fixed, changed, or canceled. All right, there's only one reason I'm hitting this topic today, and it's because I want to help you, the car buyer, stay in the driver's seat and in control of your own car deal. Yes, you could say some of this stuff will have little consequence, and sometimes it will, but being aware will help you stay in control and understand how you're giving up some of that control during the car deal. In response to this video, I fully expect that there will be dealership employees commenting below with, Hey, I got an idea. Don't contact us and don't show up at our store if you're not ready to buy today. As if doing homework and taking your time on the second largest buying decision most of us ever make is something stupid people do. Well, just ignore that nonsense. If you agree it's a lot smarter to drive a few cars, collect information, and then take a day or two to think about it, then stay tuned. Sleeping on it is the number one strategy that would have fixed most really bad car buying decisions. So, the purpose of my video today is not to say you shouldn't try to help a salesman guide you through the process. The purpose is to make sure you get the opportunity to sleep on it. Alright, 10 things you should not say to a car salesman or a dealership. Number 1. Don't start your visit at the dealership saying you plan to pay cash. There's already a video on this channel which explains in detail why you don't do this, so I'm not going to repeat why. See the video if you don't understand why this is so important. It's titled, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash at Car Dealerships. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Number two, don't tell the salesman you're in the market to buy a car today. If you show urgency to do a deal and cough up the fact that you need or want a vehicle right away, plan on enduring high-pressure tactics for your entire visit. They're not going to let you off easily if you do this, and any opportunity to do serious homework with the dealer just went out the door. Just say, I'm doing my homework and have a few other scheduled dealer stops. I'm not in any major rush. Maybe I'll get around to buying something next month. Number three, don't say you're the only decision maker. Have a spouse or trusted friend or mentor that you can refer to who isn't part of your online conversation or who is not at the dealership. Dealers train on the importance of having all the decision makers there so they can work on both of your weaknesses at the same time. If your spouse is at home or you have somebody else you can talk to about the big decisions you make like this one, you have a way out when they try to pin you down. I'll have to talk to my wife first. That line gets you out out of a lot of jams. Number four. Don't say you're open to any number of options, like color, trim levels, or vehicle type. 
If you don't already have a color, pick one and stick with it, even if it's not really important to you. Salespeople are looking for hot buttons, so let them focus on a perceived hot button that won't motivate you to do something foolish and allows you to go home and think about the things they presented today. As you're getting up to go, you can say, well, it's too bad it isn't blue. And this gets you back home looking at the car deal without a salesman breathing down your neck. Number five, don't say you're only considering one vehicle. A smart person will consider various vehicles in a given class, so say, I have five different cars I'm looking at. If you have just one car in mind, all they have to do is line you up with that vehicle and you start caving in. If you have five cars to look at, the pressure just isn't there. Now they can keep asking you if the vehicles you are seeing are helping you narrow down the process. When the day is done, you're going to go home and have a proper comparison before deciding what you're going to buy. Number six, budget. Don't give them a payment goal. They train on it, so you won't hear the end of it. Besides, payments and loan terms are easily manipulated to make a deal work for you, and quite often, that deal isn't a deal at all for you. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes anyone makes when car shopping. Psychologically, you are beaten the minute they get you to start thinking about decisions on car payments, and financially, you're about to shoot yourself in the foot. Don't let that happen to you. Number seven. Don't give out your actual permanent contact information. I'm talking about your phone number and email. If you do, you'll be setting yourself up for harassment calls and emails. It's easy to get around this. You can either get a Google Voice number or a temporary number through any of the services that are out there, and you can create a new email to use for your car shopping experience. It will be a great place to collect your information without unnecessary harassment in your everyday life. This is also pretty cool because when you decide to buy again a few years from now down the road, all of your previous homework is all there for you to look at, helping you to repeat good decisions and avoid repeating mistakes you made. The other thing to be aware of is that some dealers have been compromised in terms of security. Do you want unknown people getting your permanent contact information? I don't think so. Number eight, don't tell them how long you plan on keeping the car. This question is designed to position the sale of the products to you, like warranties, paint protection, gap insurance, tire and wheel protection, junk policies like window etching, and all the other junk you don't really need. They're also looking for loan term ideas to pitch to you. The longer you say I'll keep the car, the longer the loan terms will be that they propose. You don't want long loan terms, ever. Number nine, don't say you don't want to waste their time and don't apologize for the time you spend on the process. You should take whatever time you need. The truth is, a really high percentage of their day is wasted anyway. If you're there talking to them, you save them from eating too many donuts and drinking too much of that dealership Kool-Aid for the day. Number 10. Don't start expressing doubts about reliability, damage to your car, somebody stealing it, etc. Do your own homework beforehand. Talk to your mechanic. Only shop for vehicles with good reliability track records. Every worry or concern that you give to the dealership on reliability just translates into one more product, another few thousand bucks down the drain for you. Your worries turn into hot buttons for them, and they will be pitching you on everything under the sun, surrounded by the pretense of you needing peace of mind and protecting your investment, as if the finance officer is actually more of a mentor who cares about protecting you at all. A bonus tip. If you went to the dealership or started the online conversations for the purpose of getting information, ask them to print out a proposed deal for you to take home and include all of the fees and other expenses they expect to have in the car deal. Get the documentation. You'll be surprised how much fat you find in the deal. And if you want, email us a copy and we'll review it for you. If you want to mess with them a little, tell them you're sending the deal off to be reviewed. If there's anything they like less than somebody who gets up and walks away from them, it's somebody who walks away and has somebody else comb over their car contract before you sign it. Now, I fully expect to see the comment section light up with salesmen or finance officers saying, this guy is full of BS and, hey, the 80s wants their information back, as if to say what I just shared with you is either untrue or outdated. They always use these tired old lines. They never come up with anything new. I'm recommending that you be your own judge of the validity of the information I just shared. If you've been shopping online recently or you've been visiting a dealership, don't be surprised when you encounter some or all of the things I mentioned today and suddenly realize you've committed some of the mistakes I said you need to avoid. If your car buying process was ever cut short and you pulled the trigger on a bad car deal prematurely, you definitely made one of these mistakes. 
All right, if you appreciate the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave us a comment below. And do me a favor, would you? Include hashtag the homework guy in your comment. Share the video on social media with your friends and use the hashtag again. Over time, the accumulation of information and the tips on hashtag the homework guy will be phenomenal. Maybe you also want to visit the Homework Guy store in the links below and wear the Is That the Best You Can Do shirt to the dealership. And for those of you who want to say thanks for the tip, I'll leave the PayPal link in the description box below. I've helped millions of car buyers with videos and free contract reviews, and we hope to meet you in your city someday in the future ahead. You, my friend, are part of the change coming to the car business. I'll be back with another great video on car shopping. If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover in the future, please let me know what it is. Thanks again, everyone, for coming back. I'm off now to enjoy a little leisure time with the family. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone. Thank you.